Hello and welcome back to the unofficial guide to NDI. In today's video, we're going to be looking at NDI 5.0, the latest tool pack available for free at NDI.tv. So first of all, I want to explain what that is new in NDI 5. If you've downloaded the unofficial guide to NDI for free, you know we've already covered all the great new NDI 5.0 tools and improvements. So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the new NDI 5 launcher and the new tools that are available for you to use. Okay, so here we have NDI 5.0 and the new tool, that this, these are all the tools that are available. So we've got webcam input, which you probably know about, studio monitor, screen capture, access manager is one that we're going to cover in an upcoming video. And then bridge, audio direct, and remote are brand new tools that I want to talk about in this upcoming video series. So we're going to focus on bridge, remote, and audio direct to familiarize you with these new tools. And take a moment to look at the new NDI launcher, which is, I think, a pretty cool new tool. So let's take this full screen. I want to walk you guys through the NDI launcher. So when you install NDI 5.0, you're going to get this new app that's going to pop up and it's going to say, hey, what are you interested in? Do you want to start using your phone as a webcam, which is obviously very popular, or would you like to start learning about the NDI tools? Now, using your phone as a webcam, we are going to have a separate video on that. Um, but essentially, you can, whether you have a, a iOS or an Android phone, you can install the NDI HX camera or the NDI HX capture app. The camera app turns your phone into a camera. The capture app captures whatever you're doing on your phone and outputs it as an NDI source on your local area network. One way to use this would be to run NDI webcam input to connect your smartphone as a webcam source with like, let's say a software like Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Skype. So that's a really great way to use um, NDI. But in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the new tools. So this is a great launcher. It's going to help you familiarize yourself with all the tools that you have at your disposal. We just talked a little bit about webcam input. And if you've been following our tutorial series, you've already seen the video on that. We also have a dedicated video on Studio Monitor, which is the application that's used not just for viewing NDI sources, but also controlling them and displaying them in a variety of formats. So check out our video on Studio Monitor. Screen Capture, if we hit the Learn More button, I'll just go quickly through here, you'll notice there's actually two versions of Screen Capture. There's Screen Capture, the regular NDI, and there's Screen Capture NDI HX. We're actually running Screen Capture right now, and that's how I'm sending this screen over to our production PC. So this, this launcher essentially gives you a great place to go back and say, hey, do I know enough about this NDI um, application that I'm using? Let me learn a little bit more or even jump right into launching the app itself. Test Patterns is a, a fairly useful tool for sending out an NDI source with lots of different test patterns or custom images. Um, Access Manager, we're going to have an upcoming video on this, manages really, in my opinion, the security of your NDI network. It allows you to determine what NDI sources are visible to which computers on your network. NDI Bridge is something we're going to look at in an upcoming video, but we'll look at more depth in this video. Again, in this video, we're going to expose you to these new tools, and then we'll do in-depth deep dive videos in the next upcoming videos. But essentially, Bridge allows you to connect your NDI sources on your local area network to another local area network, and we'll dig into that in a moment. NDI Audio Direct is one for anyone using a digital audio workstation. It includes BST3 plugins that you can use to bring audio in and out of any software that supports BST3. Very cool. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video. NDI Remote is the ability to share or receive NDI sources over the web, over the public internet. And I have to say, this is why 
you know, bridge and remote especially is what, what's making NDI so exciting in today's modern video production world. We also have NDI for After Effects, Premiere, and then NDI for VLC. So those are the launchers. That's the launcher tool that gives you a little bit more access. This is the launcher we just went through, a little bit more of a tutorial um, feel for NDI. So let's talk about NDI Bridge first. Now, NDI Bridge has three modes. It has the host mode, it has a join mode, and it has a local mode. Now, the name Bridge essentially is there because it allows you to bridge two networks together. And it's a very cool way. You can have a host that is the host of the bridge, and then you have the remote of the bridge that joins that bridge from anywhere in the world using the public internet, the wide area network, which is different from your local area network. And it's a really powerful tool, but it's still in beta. And so we're not going to be doing a live demonstration of this today, but we are going to cover the topics that this product can do for us. And then there's also a local mode, which is very interesting, and it actually helps us really understand NDI better as we dig into this. The local mode allows you to transcode local NDI streams and serve as a proxy to serve better NDI content on many networks, and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, NDI Bridge essentially advertises and transports NDI over the wide area network. So it allows you to say, hey, I want to host an NDI Bridge, and you can select NDI groups that can be sent and received over this bridge. And essentially, you do that using your public IP address. And we are going to do a deep dive into NDI Bridge. So I'm going to cover this at a high level in all the new NDI 5.0 tools. And then in an upcoming NDI Bridge video, we're really going to dig more detail. But essentially, the NDI Bridge will support all NDI capabilities that you have on your local area network, meaning alpha channel, PTZ control, KVM, which is that keyboard and video and mouse control, tally light control and metadata. So here's a quick little picture to show you, you know, one way that this may work. We would have replay and graphics potentially in Los Angeles, a production studio in Texas, San Antonio, and then maybe we have an audio producer in New York. We can in connect entire networks together anywhere in the world using the bridge. So one thing to think about is the technical details NDI Bridge uses reliable user data gram protocol, which is called RUDP. It's a transport protocol that's used for point-to-point -point connections. It will require a public IP address, which we will talk about more, and port forwarding. It will support multiple connections over this one port, and that is a big deal when you look at other technologies like SRT, which require multiple uh, I, I ports to do so. NDI sources get placed in groups, which we'll talk about with Access Manager. Access Manager is the tool that you use to group together NDI sources, and they will be made available over the NDI Bridge. The other awesome thing about NDI Bridge is it supports both NDI HX and NDI full bandwidth, including transcoding, which is very helpful when you have limited bandwidth. Now, Let's take a look at NDI Bridge in practice. So on the left side over here, we have a group, okay? And we're gonna learn more about NDI groups with the Access Manager tool, but a group might be, let's say you've got 20 NDI sources on your network, you might just group six of them together and say, this is the group that I want to send with the NDI Bridge over the internet. I don't need to send all of them, just this one group. Um, now you could just do your whole public group, meaning all NDI sources, but essentially it gives you the flexibility to choose a group, which could be a mixture of NDI high efficiency and NDI full bandwidth sources. Take that into the NDI bridge and get the option to transcode those sources. So let's say you've got all uh, NDI full bit rate, full bandwidth sources. The, they're very uh, high bandwidth, right? They've got, they're using a lot of bandwidth. Well, we can transcode those before we send them over the public internet which could be more reliable depending on how much bandwidth we have. And then we can send them to the bridge on the other side. And we can 
use that public IP address as an entry into the host and a port. Now, it also supports encryption, and we'll talk a lot about that in an upcoming video. But as you can see, NDI 5.0 is making a huge splash in the industry because it's making things easier. NDI was already great on the local area network at a high level. Bridge is allowing us to transport our local area network video sources anywhere in the world. So NDI moves video and audio all across the world. And audio is becoming a much bigger deal as well with the new Audio Direct feature, which we'll look at in more detail in an upcoming video. So video and audio all becoming more powerful. So that was Bridge. And then NDI Remote is something, again, we're going to have another video about. But just to so that you're aware of it, what NDI Remote will do is it actually runs inside of Studio Monitor. And it gives you a QR code and a link that you can send to anybody in the world to join your NDI source. So if there's somebody with a camera, if there's somebody with a video and audio source, maybe they're reporting from the field, maybe they're just sending you a production output over the public internet without even needing to set up the NDI bridge, you can do so with NDI remote and send that video directly over the internet into your production. And it uses a turn relay server. And all of this is uh, really shown here. And um, we're going to look at all of this in a much greater detail. But if you've used WebRTC, if you've used a video communication software like Google Hangouts that runs in the web browser, it's very similar to that, where you can have all the incoming connections, you can manage them all on your local area network, and people can use a simple web browser. And they get these great controls over choosing which camera they want to use, which um, audio source they want to use, whether they want to send audio and video, and it really simplifies everything. So we're going to look at that in conjunction with Studio Monitor in a moment. And then Audio Direct, of course, is the other new software which you should know about. This is for those folks who are audio engineers who know how to use VST3 plugins, allowing you to do a lot more with NDI audio, whether it's coming in to a digital audio workstation or it's coming out of a digital audio workstation, right? So if you have a lot of NDI sources on your network, you want to bring them into a digital audio workstation to add more capabilities, to add additional functionality to your audio, whether you're producing a podcast or a high-end broadcast. You can also output all of that in a live format to increase the quality of your live video productions as well. So that's for those folks who use digital audio workstations. If you don't, you know that might be one that you want to skip because it's going to be complicated. We're going to go through it. But if you don't use digital audio workstations, it won't have a whole lot of value to you in the same sense that NDI for After Effects and Premiere are really just for those folks who use those applications. So that is an overview of NDI 5.0. If you have not updated your NDI 5.0 tools yet, go ahead and update those tools because I've already seen a lot of great improvements to the performance of NDI. All right, stick around for our next video in the upcoming video series, The Unofficial Guide to NDI.